Okay, it's Kevin here. Um, we're going to take a look at a letter for the OET. Someone sent me. And uh, I'll just make a couple of comments and uh, we'll see how that goes. First of all, disclaimer, content for fair use, teach in purpose. Okay, just get that out of the way at first. So we've got the criteria, official public version. And we've got some case notes. Again, this is, these are official notes from Cambridge Box Hill. Educational purpose only, no copyright uh, breach intended. So, uh, mm -mm. so what I've said before, what we need to do first, go to the task, audience and purpose. So you can see uh, the author uh, has highlighted a couple of notes. I didn't do this. But I'm just got my pen, do the do, do pencil. Actually, I'm um, quite pleased with this. I was talking to um, somebody on somebody sent me a message on my Facebook page, the English native, and he said that he passed his OET writing just by watching my videos. I thought, well, <laughs> I hope it's something more because you know, but. That's what he said. So that was uh, pretty good, I think. And that's all. I've never spoken to him. I haven't assessed him. He just said, oh, Kev, you know, I've watched all your videos and I passed. So very good for him. So Dr. Smith, endocrinologist. Right, so plan. Okay, okay. Check. Okay, check it out. So, da, 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 da. so you know, these are pretty straightforward. Uh, in my other videos, I was other teachers online that will tell you the same thing. It's about audience and purpose, who you're writing to, and that will tell you what you have to include, what you need to exclude, etc. So, Dr. Smith, so endocrinology. So, anything that's not endocrinologically, if that's even a word, related, don't include it. Okay, further management, Mrs. Sharma, Sugar Levels. So, that's basically it. So you have to write it in like a letter, you know, uh, with the address and blah, 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 blah. And here we've got the kind of notes. These are what my, um, well, not, not student because I haven't actually spoken to them, but the person who sent me this. So it's going to look like a letter, address, the date, the greeting, the DOB, reference line, the purpose history paragraph and then visit results and visit and closing repeat purpose again and that's it that's all it's pretty straightforward not too taxing so mm -mm. all right so purpose immediately apparent dear dr so and so i'm writing to request that you do blah 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 Content appropriate to the reader, what they need, what they don't need, to include it. These are two sides of the same coin. Genre, organization, layout, these are the tricky ones. And mostly for the language, it's past tenses, I seem to find. But for most of you, this is what you need. Around about 350, okay? Two, five, 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 five. This is what you need. So let's have a look at this. So it looks like a letter, got the address, name, okay, which is pretty Sharma, D O B. Okay. I'll we'll just put some changes on. Do, 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 do. Have these changes on. Oops, no. Put them back on. Changes, changes. Okay, okay. Right now, so we don't really need that. Six year old lady, I mean, you've put the D O B, right? So we've got that. We know she's a lady, a lady, whoops, I mean, you know, you mean a woman, I mean, the kind of, of title and the name kind of tells us that, so we don't really need that. Refer Mrs. Sharma, who has, with uncontrolled, uh, Mrs. Sharma, who has uncontrolled, so with, I'm referring her with, well, I'm referring her who has, for assessment and management, uh, for management, so we've got the same thing 
bottom, that's okay. Now, I don't know why people keep using this highly appreciated. We don't really need that. I mean, you know, it's not a personal favour. So just, I would appreciate it if you could, blah, 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 blah. blah. So, Mr. Shower, 60 LNA, could control diabetes, okay. Presents with excessive worry. Excessive worry? Was it really excessive? She was concerned. What's it say? Um, does it say no? Do, 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 do. She's concerned. Mm. Was it excessive worry? I don't know about. Seems a little bit uh, much. Let's have a look. So yeah, she was c concerned. So that's it. So she monitors her BP and sugar at home, right? She's been diabetic since 1999, family history, her weight doesn't really change, eye exam was fine. So she's um, analyzing, well, analyzing, uh, is measuring, recording her own sugar levels. She does that at, at home, home and monitoring. Okay. Excessive worry, about a blood glucose cells, and this indicated blood BP, which was commenced on the day. Her test results, not simply her test results, that's plural. We don't need a, a genitive case there. Uh, obviously, uh, high cholesterol, I'll just put a comment there, okay. Subsequent presentation, you could say Mrs. Sharma re returned with increased uh, fibers others. Uh, well, you don't need as as well, so 50 milligrams, and that's what's even were added. You can just put, oops, make that part of a sentence. There's no need to have it separate. Mm -hmm. You're in for that, okay, okay, so that's good. Despite of these changes, despite of, we don't need the prepositions, but I'll show you to the treatment, come to P. Uh, to her treatment and control of her BP. Well, it's not control, though, is it? So you mean attempted control? These changes to a treatment. The last hospital, the 16, with the average of 7 to 8. So whatever it is, is has. Mm. If we're connecting past and present, has had for the past 20 years. So make it present and perfect. That's better. Uh, balanced. Diet. Weather could be a my twenty-four. So we've got three separate sentences here. So this is pretty much like the case notes, which we don't really want. We don't want to just do case note, case note, case note. You know, change it to a short, short sentence because that's no good. So okay, family history, right, right, nineteen ninety-nine, menopause. Don't really need that. Ourselves. We don't need this again. That's subjective, so that's good. Uh, okay, okay. Follow it down. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it, really. This one's pretty straightforward. And that's that. Hey, let's check, guys. And, and what did it show? Was it normal? Then you should say so, because. Simply saying her last eye check without telling me what the result of the eye check was, it's kind of a pointless. She had some examinations on in 2017, and what did they show? So if you're not going to tell me, it's kind of pointless information. Um, diet couldn't be my 24. Didn't you mention a BP? Commenced on. Okay, we're getting your concerns now. If it's her glucose levels are not irresponsible. Irresponsible is like when you have a a teenager who goes out and stays out all night long and doesn't go to school. That's you know irresponsible. Glucose levels can't really be irresponsible unless you mean non-responsive, which is not the same thing. Irresponsive, and um, if I don't think that's a word, I think it's probably non irresponsible responsiveness. And there, so we would probably do non responsive, non responsive. That's it. 
irresponsible. That's like when a person does something that's not responsible. I say like staying out all, all night and getting pissed, you know, irresponsible. So non-responsive. Right, so non-responsive glucose levels. To, so non-responsive to current. So again, this word order here is like regarding her concern and to non-responsive glucose levels. We don't need to say to current treatments because it's obvious, you know, if they're non-responsive, then they're not responsive to the treatment. But you would have to change that word order and to non-responsive to current treatment glucose levels are as her glucose levels are non-responsive to current treatment, you'd have to do it like that, okay? And no response to cells, and highly appreciated. Why would it be highly? And why is it passive? Appreciated by by who? By the patient. And why do people keep on saying highly appreciated? You know, this is a medical professional. They're doing you a job. They're not lending you money. They're not doing you a personal favor. So if you assess over further management, deem appropriate. Okay. Concerns and non responsive glucose levels. I appreciate the assessor for my deemed appropriate yours. So I can mention has it to contact me. Okay. Let's have a look. Uh, purpose. Purpose is good. Very good. Content. Mm, I give it six because nothing's perfect. There's always something that you could add, but I think in general, this letter is good. Irrelevant information, not really. Let's have another look at it. Uh, so what did I say? 60 year old lady, didn't really need that. Excessive kind of worry, excessive worry. That's like a judgment, really. She was concerned, kind of worried. Um, no, I think it's good enough. I think it's good. Information's good. Yeah, I'll give it a five for that. Writing's good. Again, I think five, five, five. I think this is, it's pretty straightforward. I would have maybe put the history paragraph as paragraph two, like in the sample. Now, what you can do with a sample, if you download it from the official site, you can, I mean, there's right, there's, there's more than one way to write a letter, for sure, you know. But uh, if we can just look at the organization here, we can see how we can use it. So you've got your purpose. Thanks for seeing for further management. I would have, I don't like, thank you for seeing. I would have said, I'm writing to request your further management assessment of Mrs. Pre Ashama. That's pretty clear. History paragraph. Okay. So this tells me the background. Okay. So I would have put that as paragraph two. And then if you're going to mention the eye exam, tell me what it showed or what it didn't show. All right. So strong family history. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. So I would I would probably put this again as paragraph two because that fills in what follows. All right. Visit one. Results. Visit two. Restatement of purpose. Closing, etc. Okay. Boom. That's all. So mm, I would have. Back to criteria to do, do, do so. I think it's yeah, yeah. I would give it five minor slips. I'd probably give language six because it isn't bad. I think this would certainly get a at least three three fifty. All right, because it's got the purpose is clear, it's restated, content's good. Maybe some you know it could be a little better five or six five or six. Right, it's good and da 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 da. I I think this would would certainly do. All right. If your aim is for a B, I think even the these little minor things, I think it should be good. Okay. So word choice, word order, I'll maybe change it, but it doesn't really change anything. Present perfect. Uh, so I think yeah, I think you should. Well, so you her the author should get a B, but just to be sure, I would make these minor changes that I've outlined here. Now, one last thing before we go, I want to check the word count. One seventy five, I thought so. So that's too short. One seventy five, that's too short. Now if we look at the sample. 
if I can, if I can do it here, if I can, can I grab it? Select annotation, right, so, will it, I don't know if I can do it with this, uh, I might not be able to do it. Select text, ah, right, 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 so I can do it, so, if I grab this, let's see what the word count is to the official sample, all right, just as a exercise. 216. All right, so yours is a little bit short now. The reason why they say 180 to 200, um, where do I say it? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Approximately, right, right, right. So, um, these are recommendations, these are guidelines, there's no automatic um, penalty, but they reckon that if it's less than 180. It might not be enough language for them to assess. And yours is 175, so it's a kind of borderline. So I would try and aim for 200 ish. Right? That sample is 216. Yours is 175. So it's just a couple of sentences more. You could fill in a story a little bit more. It's a little bit sparse. But I think if you do that, you should be fine. All right? So, not too bad, just a little bit short, one or two little points. I'll just leave that on the screen so you can have a look at those. Right, there you go. Hope that helps. I say, I think this, you know, I think if with a bit of practice, I, mean, I, I don't know if this is your, your first attempt or your second or your third or, you know, or whatever you've done for uh, practice up till now, but if you just make a couple of minor changes, I think... You should be fine because the English part is not bad at all. Just one or two little minor points and it should be fine. Okay, I hope that helps.